Hey Facebook, uh, it's me, Kelsey, Community Outreach Coordinator. I'm here today with Dr. Danya Linehan. She's the Program Chair for Animal Welfare and Management. Um, so if you have a question for Dr. Danya, please comment below and we will do our best to answer those at the end. Um, so thanks so much for talking with me My today, pleasure. Danya. Awesome, awesome. Um, so I, I'm sure you know this, but the animal industry is huge, right? I mean, according to you know, the internet and all sorts of uh, facts and figures. Um, we're spending billions on this per year. In 2015 alone, we spent, you know, over $60 billion in the animal industry on our wow. pets. Um, I think so 45 billion of that was my expenses alone <laughs> with my household. <laughs> all right, you have cats, right? Yes, I do. Okay, I understand yeah. then. Um, <laughs> this industry is enormous. I mean, when you start looking at not only veterinary medicine, and what we're doing in animal welfare management and shelter medicine, but you look at the retail industry, mm -hmm. people boarding their animals, grooming their animals, training their animals, buying jackets and necklaces and uh, diamond brooches for their animals. It's unbelievable what we spend in this country on animals. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I understand that, you know, animal welfare and management, your program can kind of apply to different segments of the animal industry. Mm -hmm. Um, so can you just kind of talk for a second, you know, what areas you touch on and how does that come into play in real life? Sure. Um, it, do you want me to go into the career side or more the education side to start with what the students are getting? Um, let's do education first okay. and then we'll move to careers. Okay. okay. So in our educational program, we do lots of stuff you would expect for animal welfare management. So we're talking about shelter medicine. We're talking about infectious disease. We're talking about anatomy and physiology and basic biology. We're talking about behavior and animal enrichment. But some things that people might not expect, and much to their chagrin because it involves humans, is we're also talking about uh, oral and written communications, how to deal with clients, how to deal with your coworkers, because humans are a big part of the animal field. Uh, for better or worse, we have to talk to the people as well. We are also looking at business and accounting and how to do digital communications in a new world as well as regular oral and written communication. So that's just a glimpse into it. Oh wow, okay, I can definitely see that. Um, so you know, what kind of jobs can come out of that then? Lots. Most of our students so far, their interest lies in small animal sheltering. So they're going to work at shelter and rescue organizations. Uh, one of the big benefits I think to our program is in addition to giving them the animal side, the animal medicine and animal handling side is all of that other stuff. The idea about business and facility management and how to schedule a staff meeting and how to schedule a staff mm -hmm. and how to best communicate with uh, not only owners and clients but one another and other professionals. So it allows them a more, um, I think a more broad range of what they can look at in terms of a career when they go into animal sheltering. In addition to small animal shelters, we also have some large animal sanctuaries some equine and other farm animal sanctuaries that our students are looking at. And believe it or not, there are paid positions out there to help these animals. Some of our folks are going more into retail. So they're looking at boarding and grooming facilities at like doggy spas and doggy daycares, training facilities, and some big places that kind of combine it all under one roof. And finally, some are staying with veterinary medicine, but instead of being specifically a vet tech or a veterinarian, they're there more on the practice management side. So that's just a brief yeah, just a brief look at what some of our <laughs> students are doing. Wow, well that's uh, quite a collection there. Um, so you can get pretty hands-on with an animal in a field like this? Oh, you're going to get way hands-on. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> way hands-on, way hands-in. Now what we have in our program, since this is an online program, is we only have one big opportunity for hands-on in the educational program itself, and that's your externship, where you choose a site, and we try to get students to think way ahead on choosing their site. Where are you going to really want to try this out? Kind of try it on for size and see if it's a good match for you. And that's when they're in a shelter, they're at a farm, they're at a facility that does board and grooming training, or they're in an animal hospital actually living the life. For uh, now, it'll be for five weeks that they're basically having a five week working interview. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. So um, I understand this program is 100% online. So. I kind of wanted to ask, you know, what kind of support do online students receive? As much as we can give them. Yeah. Some of our students are really close to one of the AHEAD campuses, which is awesome because our online students not only get their online support, but if they want to come to campus, they also are welcome to any of the support systems, whether it be our librarian, librarian, any of the tutors here in administration who can help them one-on-one. -on -one. 
but online they have several layers. They have their initial instructors, they have online orientations, they have me, they have our whole distance learning team that's at their disposal at, at any given time, and they have our admissions folks mm -hmm. who are at their disposal at any given time to help them. And each other, one of the biggest things I love about online classes, and I have to, I'll admit in front of the entire world or the 2.5 people that are watching right now on live stream, I was the biggest opponent, I would say, here to online learning when they first brought up the idea three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. I thought it was horrible. I thought it was inferior. And then they kind of said, well, interesting, because you're going to take these online classes and then start writing some online classes. And I've had a complete change of heart, and now I'm a big fan of online learning. Part of that is because of our weekly discussions. So the students must participate. It doesn't matter how shy they are. It doesn't matter how much they hate to write or interact. Part of their grade and part of their entire experience is they must participate and engage with each other and engage with me in the class. So that is a way for them to really support each other. And it breaks down barriers. They share study tips. They share their biggest obstacles, what they're facing as obstacles, and uh, kind of life skills. So it's, it's really neat because we have such a diverse group. We have some kids who are literally 18 or 19 still living at home, kind of having their traditional college experience. And then we have folks who are in their 30s, 40s, and 50s who are what we uh, politically call non-traditional students, meaning they got a whole life and they're doing the school as an additional thing to their full-time job and their part-time job and caring for their children. And in some cases, they're leaving the security of a first career to dive into this. So all those walks of life can converge and support one another in our discussions, which is fun. Right. I mean, it's what they're passionate about. Yes. So And share really cute pictures of their animals. That's really <laughs> part of it, too. Yeah. yeah, that's a big one for sure. Yeah. Um, I know that you have one student, at least, who I've spoken to who said that the response time is incredible. Um, oh, you know. good. Try to that. <laughs> yeah, we try to get back to students since they are you know, ostensibly sitting at home in their kitchen at 11 o'clock at night, kind of panicking over a question. We try not to leave them hanging too long. Um, our goal was to get back to everybody within 24 to 48 hours. Mm -hmm. We try to sort of under-promise and over-deliver and get back to them faster. Perfect. And give them a number of ways to get a hold of us. Perfect. Yeah. So speaking of students, I mean, obviously we have a variety of students here at Stauffenberger. Mm -hmm. I mean, our largest program here is the Veterinary Technology Program, yeah. of course. Um, so I'm just kind of curious, you know, what are the differences between veterinary technology and animal welfare and management, and what are the similarities? Lots of, well, lots of both. Lots of similarities because these are going to be major animal people. Mm -hmm. I mean, most, if you ask most of our vet tech students, and that's the department that I taught in for years was exclusively vet tech. Now I kind of split my time. But if you ask most of our incoming vet tech students or most of our incoming AWM students, why are you doing this? What's, you know, what's your reason for being here? I love it's animals. because they love animals. Yeah. Some of them will give you the subset, and I hate people. But <laughs> usually at least it's that I love animals. I only want to work with animals. Uh, so they have that huge piece in common, that their lifetime goal and their passion is to help animals. Now, the vet tech, is, the vet tech industry is just much more specific. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the animal field is a huge umbrella. Animal welfare management has several places under that umbrella. Vet tech starts with one big stream under that umbrella, and that is you are essentially an animal nurse. So you go through this super rigorous program, and you literally are going to do everything that we can do as veterinarians with a few exceptions. You can't do surgery. You can't make an official diagnosis or prognosis, and you can't prescribe drugs. Everything else, every other treatment, animal care, animal medication, giving injections, assisting in surgery, monitoring anesthesia, that's a vet tech. It's mm -hmm. literally like being a high-powered nurse in a human hospital. Animal welfare management is way more diverse. Those guys are not going to be able to do things like place an IV catheter, officially anyway, monitor anesthesia, things like that, that the nurses or the techs would do. But they can do a whole host of other things in terms of working with, um, they can do medications that, let's say, we would train an owner to do, or that we would train another shelter worker to do. And then they can do the whole piece of animal enrichment, behavior, dealing with the customers and clients, and taking care of the animals as a whole. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Um, so, um, knowing the differences between the programs, then are there characteristics that an animal welfare management student might have that maybe a vet tech student doesn't, or any other student for that matter? Uh, I think that they actually need the same basic characteristics, with with only a few exceptions. Many of the the animal welfare management or AWM students won't have to deal with uh, gobs and gobs of blood and pus and things like that. Let's say. 
Um, so they might not have to have as strong a stomach, shall we say, as the vet tech. Some of them will surprisingly find themselves in those situations. But as far as the characteristics of who I want to hire and who I want to be proud to send out in the world for other folks to hire, they need to have great level of communication. They need to be punctual and be responsible. They need to have a tremendous work ethic. They got to be prepared to dive in and not stop. These are long, exhausting days. They're really exhilarating, they're really rewarding. You can sure sleep at night because first of all, you're exhausted. Second of all, you feel like you've done good for the world. But you've got to have a lot of the people pieces as well. You have to be able to work really well as a team. You have to be able to keep your cool. You have to be non-judgmental, which can be one of the single hardest things to maintain in, a, in any day, especially in a shelter. It's so funny you ask that. We just had an advisory committee meeting last night. We were talking to shelter directors and my animal control officer friends, and we were actually talking about this very thing. What are the biggest traits that we look for in these folks? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you do have to have a tremendous compassion for animals and for every animal. It doesn't matter if it's cute and fuzzy and smells good or not. You know, you have to have the same level of commitment and compassion for every animal. You have to expect the unexpected. You have to be prepared that you might not work a, a 9 to 5.30 schedule and leave work smelling nice to go out to dinner with your friends at the end of a given day. So there's a handful. Yeah. How long is this interview? I could go on for the next two and a half hours about the characteristics, but there are some of them. That's great. Um, so I want to ask our cameraman, Chris, are there any questions that we have? Just one, just to confirm that the program is online. It is 100% yes. online, correct? Correct. With, with the exception of the externship. And with that externship, you guys are going to find a site near you, whether that is a farm sanctuary, animal hospital, shelter, or other, and work at that site for five weeks. Okay, yeah. super. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Linehan. Absolutely. Um, we're going to go ahead and sign off now. If you have a question that, that maybe we didn't talk about, please give us a call. You can reach us at 440-838-1999. And you can always, of course, visit our website at www.sctoday.edu. Thanks for watching. Thank you, guys.